What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Dead Funny Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Joined today is my co-host, Jojo. Wow. Bro, huh. we talked about this off camera, but now we can talk about it on camera. New World Beta. Open Beta. Okay. Yeah, yeah dude. what's that happening? That is going to be the weekend or week of the 9th. September 9th will be the Ooh. Open Beta, so you can try it out. Versus me, where I had to buy it to try it. Yeah. Which doesn't bother me because I'm still buying it. But yeah, dude. <laughs> right, yeah. You get to buy it or not buy it and try it. And I'm I'm hoping they'll have some new shit. That'd be great for the people who played the closed beta. Because in the alpha, they had different weapons than in the beta. So it'd be cool if like they had you know the weapons from the alpha also. Wait, the, wait how long is that open beta going to be? I think it's only for like four days or something oh so you can't really get very far yeah well i mean even if you did it would be a complete wipe anyway so it's not like it really yeah. fucking matters but uh, it uh, doesn't it's more you should hope there's play. nothing new in it because you don't want to make a character and play four days oh i'd still do it anyway i don't give a shit dude Yeah, to ensure that everyone has a chance to play New World before it launches on the 28th, an open beta will begin on September 9th at 7 a.m. and continue until September 12th. So five days. Or wait, not five days, three days. I don't know where the fire got five from. I can't do math. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 7 a.m. and then 12. Okay, that's that's where I got that at. Anyways, um, yeah, from 7 a.m. to the 12th at 12 or 11.59 p.m., um, yeah. Yeah, it's short. Interested players will be able to request. At, I mean, it comes out fucking 20 days after that, so. Interested players will be able to request access beginning on September 8th at 7 a.m. Let's see. Yeah, nope, there will be no progress. There are no, there will be a progress wipe between the open beta launch. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't want I don't like having my progress wiped. <laughs> I think it's worth to jump on and check out the battle system. Because the yeah, battle system is real fucking clean, dude. Apparently there maybe is gonna be some stuff. They do have an actual fucking patch note. For people to read on what's changed between the two betas. Is it like significant stuff or is it just like, ah, oh, we've made sword better? Plus two to. Uh, what has changed? Patch notes. Oh, uh, it says patch notes will be available. They're not on our. They're not available yet, I don't think. <sighs> If they are, don't know how to accurately find them. So yeah. there's that. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, like I said, I'm definitely going to play it just because I fucking miss the goddamn game so much. I can't wait for that fucking game to come out. <clears throat> yeah, you really like that game. Dude, I'm telling you. I'm fucking telling you. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to stream the fuck out of that game. Got really addicted to Risk of Rain recently, though. Mm -hmm. Risk of Rain is such a good game. I played the first one when it came out. Got really addicted to that because I like pixelated games. And I was one of those people who were following like the dev progress tracker shit. I'll never oh, yeah. forget whenever they showed like the first little dev test footage. Because here you got like this 2D pixelated platformer endless wave game that everybody got addicted to. And then like the devs kept it like on the low forever that they were making a risk of rain too. Like forever. And the game's been out for a while now, but yeah. they showed a dev progress video back in the day. And whenever I saw that and saw like these characters that I was playing 3D and shit, I was like, holy fuck. And I've been playing Risk of Rain 2 for a while. It's not like I'm new to the game whatsoever, but it's very easy for that game to be a, like, let's play the fuck out of it for a little bit and then put it down. And, um... 
It just was something where it was hard for me to get back into because, like, I always play the same character. I got the character that I like, da 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 da. And then uh, we were recording a Dead Buddies episode of Cuphead. And we got off of that. We thankfully got the episodes that we needed because that game is. I always get worried when we go to sit down and record Cuphead because of how hard that game is, whether we're going to get an episode in that recording or not. Probably <laughs> more than one episode in that recording. Yeah. So. Um, but we had just got through beating somebody. I can't remember who it was. Because I think at this point, I think we're on the dragon at this point now. Ooh. We haven't beat him yet. So that's the last boss I think we need to beat in that area because we beat the bird. That one might be hard. Yeah, that one's been hard so far. Yeah. But we beat the bird. We beat the candy chick. We beat the roller coaster. We beat the genie. I feel like there was one more person that we fucking beat to that was in that area, and then we move on to the next one. But anyways, um, <clears throat> but yeah, lady yet? The what? There's like a bee at some point you fight. Then, like there's no, a beehive level. We haven't no, okay. yet. Um, but yeah, so we were getting we were getting off of that, and I saw JJ jump on. Uh, Risk of Rain 2 and I was like oh I know he's going to want me to play and I was like oh, I just don't have I don't have the one to play it right now and then I was looking at something and then my recommended it popped up like mods for Risk of Rain 2 and I was just like can you mod Risk of Rain 2 because I, I don't get into mods that much and it's something that I want to look more into I mean for me mods have always been stuff like you know like fucking character skins and shit like that and I think the, like, the most I've ever gotten into mods on a game was like Minecraft is where I probably got pretty heavy with mods and then after that it was probably like don't start together so nothing too crazy sure. like I haven't really dove into mods so I found out that you could download this app for we okay I have to stop you here go. we had this exact conversation Did we? <laughs> yeah the, I'll ask the you to download a, an, uh, an app thing to no manage shit. mods sweet <laughs> There we yes. go. Well, if you haven't heard this story, go back to the last podcast. Yeah, no. But story, <laughs> short story short, fucking Paladin, dude. I've been Sorry. champing it with fucking Paladin. No, I'm glad for that you stopped me. I want to tell the same story two weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, yes, I just I remember you talking about downloading, finding a, a thing, a program. Yeah, that, it's fucking that nuts. Messed up. It's so yeah. nice. But uh, yeah, so the Paladin, been playing the fuck out of him and. Uh, I've unlocked everything on him so far besides his last two skins. His last two skins, you have to beat the game on Monsoon difficulty, which was the hardest difficulty. And then there's a modded difficulty called Typhoon. So there's a skin for each one of those difficulties. And fuck, man, dude, Monsoon is just a bitch to play. Because, like, right now, JJ's working a lot, so he's kind of MIA. So I'm basically playing it by myself. Like, I have other people I could play it with, but I'm just like, meh. It's 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 one of those things where it's like me and JJ listen to a lot of the same music. So like when we're meeting mm-hmm. him, we're just sitting there and grinding it out. I can have the music bot in Discord. I'll throw my fucking playlist into it, and it just plays my entire fucking playlist. Me and JJ are both jamming it, and we're just fucking playing and going. Uh, yeah. We listen to a lot of Nightcore, a lot of Nightcore. So I just feel like Nightcore is like really good music for just like one of those kinds of it's games. Nightcore. You don't know what Nightcore is? Nightcore is where they speed up the fucking music and everything oh. sounds like it's a, a lot more fast paced and shit like that. Oh, I love okay, Nightcore no. music. Yeah, I got heavy into that when I got into anime. One of my buddies, <laughs> okay. he's 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 heavy into it and he got me into like because like it's very popular for them to do Nightcore remixes to anime openings. So oh. that's how I got heavy into it was that at first because then it's like they'll do the English version of it and then they'll Nightcore mix it and then it's like really fast paced and sped up. and it, So is it only a thing really that exists as a remix concept? Like do they make original Nightcore songs? If they do, I don't know about them. But yeah, most okay. of the Nightcore that I listen to is is artists that are already out. I mean, I've heard like, for instance, Nightcore Despacito, Nightcore <laughs> shit like that. You know what <laughs> okay. I mean? Like yeah. I've heard it. I'm not saying like this is something I listen to. But no, uh, that's good. Um, like one of the top artists that I like to hear Nightcore a lot is this uh, rapper rap group called Nethix. Really fucking good Nightcore. Uh, he doesn't make the Nightcore mm-hmm. music. People Nightcore his shit, and then it's fucking it's fucking okay. great. But yeah, you'll you'll. I mean, it's uh, and the reason why I say it's heavy in the anime community is because like anytime you find like a Nightcore video, I guarantee you the thumbnails an anime chick one hundred percent of the time. 
it's a th- it's an anime chick in the entire there, video there with of, that anime chick huh it's a lot of nightcore versions of lincoln park songs oh yeah i've definitely okay. found lincoln park songs those that have been be all over like anime music videos is, is lincoln yeah. park so just yeah. a modern version of that i guess fucking first time i ever heard the song numa numa was fucking <laughs> anime what? it was actually uh it was the song and it was a, I don't watch the anime either, but the only reason I knew it was because the fucking character's iconic, is uh, One Piece. Oh, so, yeah, like... Yeah, funky. so I saw fucking Luffy, and I was like, okay, yeah. well, fucking, it's obviously fucking One Piece. But yeah, and it got me, like, I actually liked the scene that I watched, too. It just wasn't enough for me to want to sit down and dedicate my life to a 7,000 episode fucking anime. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah Big thing. A little, a little out there for me. Um, but yeah. yeah. Anyways... But yeah, so like we'll, we'll we listen to a lot of night course. So maybe we'll just throw that in, and we can just fucking go and just fucking jam it. It's awesome. But uh, but yeah, whenever it's like it's not JJ, it's like other people like they're gonna want to talk and all this other stuff. And it's like I like talking. And it's fine. I'm definitely a very talkative person. But it's like, do I want to jump into a party and have to do the communication and play the game, or or I can just jam out by myself, or I could have like a movie or a TV show or something going and just fucking grind it out, you know? Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's like, I don't, I only play Overwatch like to listen to other things and then have something to do with my hands. Yeah. Right. It's like, I very rarely play that with other people because then I can't just listen to, to music or a podcast or whatever. Right. So it is what it is. But I've been having a lot of fun. I've been getting very close. Today was actually the closest I have gotten. I literally got to the level that I needed. So Mons, so so the so the way that Risk of Rain works for those of you who don't know, is that back when the game first came out, it was you go through. Now it's five levels, and then it resets, and there's different variations of levels. There's different levels that kind of casually get thrown in, uh, as far as for different difficulties going up, so that way you're not playing the same level and over and over and over and over again. But once you hit like level five, and then it considers it a reflip, you start back at the beginning of the world, and you go through those levels again. Sometimes they'll swap a level out, but the level number will stay moving forward. If you go through a full rotation, and then you get back to the third level, a celestial portal will spawn. If you go into that portal at the end of the game, it will take you to an obelisk. At the obelisk, it asks if you want to kill yourself. It literally says, like, fucking, do you want to, like, give yourself to the obelisk? If you do that, that was how you ended the game. Like, there was no, like, actual end to the game. It was like, all right, cool. Oh. I've done this. Because the, the the thing that people like about Risk of Rain is that you get items. And these items get put on your character. Your character's, like, this big. So, it puts every item on your character. There's some dumb fucking oh. items. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for instance, you have my dude that's, like, this towering fucking paladin. Huge as shit. But yet, like, whenever I get the tougher times item, which is a teddy bear, I have, like, this little teddy bear sitting on my fucking back. That's just cool. there, you know? Yeah. Now, if you get multiple of the same item, it doesn't put multiple of them on there. But still, like, there's, like, fucking 80 different items in the game. Your character looks pretty fucking stupid whenever you've been going for a while and you've got all this different shit, like fungus growing off your arm, a slab of meat just sticking off the top of your helmet, a teddy bear on your back, you know, a fucking ukulele, shit like that, you know? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> that's that's where people love the game and, and have a lot of fun with it. So you just run and run and run and run, and then it's like sooner or later you're like, ah, fuck it, you know, I've been alive for so long. We'll just fucking end it, get it over with, and then if I want to <laughs> play again, I'll run another match. If I don't, I'm fucking done with Rain for the day, whatever. So, and I think the longest one I did was that we played, we had to do 20 levels. It was like an achievement for that. So it was a long, we were in for the long haul. It was 20 levels. And it was me, a buddy, and a buddy's brother. And I don't really fuck with lunar items. And the reason why is because they take lunar coins to get. Lunar coins don't come at, as often as regular money does. But they take lunar coins to get. And they are they give significantly good stats, but they give you cons as well. And there was this one item called Shape of Glass. 
and I didn't want to pick it up because, like I said, I knew it was a lunar item. I didn't know what it did. I knew it was a lunar item, and you can't destroy lunar items. Like other items, you can destroy them off you whenever you find like a something that's it's called a disposal. You throw it in, it grinds the mm-hmm. item up, shoots out a little box, and then you can use that box to get other items. Da 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 da. You can't do that lunar items. Once you have a lunar item, that's it. It's yours. You can't you can't get rid of it. <clears throat> Shape of glass doubles your attack power, doubles, but half your health. The damage you take. Oh yeah. So there's a con. We got to the point where I was being peer pressured to pick up every shape of glass that we found. So once oh, again, stack? oh yeah, it stacks. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so it doubles the double, and then that doubles that double, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it stacks. <laughs> it also stacks the con as well. Mm-hmm. So, once again, we were in for the long haul, which is why I didn't want to do it. I mean, normally I wouldn't give a shit, but we're in for the long haul. I'm like, man, dude, I'm going to fucking just constantly die. It got to the point where, so there's this item in the game. So you get, like, your main attack... You get three other attacks, and then you get an equipment slot. Your equipment slot is an item that you pick up. They're all orange items, and they can range from what they do. There's some that are like purely defensive ones that give you extra armor. There's some that give you wings that let you fucking fly for a little bit. Or, realistically, what everybody goes for is the damage-dealing ones. My favorite one is it literally shoots a fucking lightning bolt down. I can be on the side of the on the other side of the map as long as I can see the enemy. I can target that enemy and hit it with it. So I like to use that one a lot. There's an item in the game called Fuel Cell. Fuel Cell gives you extra charges to your equipment. So normally you shoot one, you have to wait that 60, 60 second cooldown before you can shoot another one. This will give you another stack, another stack, another stack, another stack. There's other items in the game that do the same thing with some of your skills too. So at this time, I'm playing the mercenary, which is just the only guy at the time that ran around with a sword. <clears throat> so I'm running around this fucking ninja looking dude with a sword. I am probably, I have the, the lightning bolt, and I have about 10 fuel cells. So now I have a total of 11 of these lightning bolts I can call down. And I'm about 10 shape of glass deep. So my damage is through yeah. the fucking roof. Yeah. But I have like 10 health. So it was funny because anytime a boss would show up, I would just rain lightning down on him and kill him instantly within seconds. We're deep into this game. And the only other thing that I was stacking up on my character was mobility items. So it would take me about like 0.5 seconds to get from one side of the map to the other side of the map running around it because that's how fast my character was. Like his feet were so fast I couldn't even see them. They were just... (laughs) Which is so fun to do. Yeah. And my buddy's brother was like, you are literally the definition of a glass cannon right now. Like, you do all this damage, but the moment you get hit, you're fucked, dude. You are yeah. fucking done. Oh, man. And I was like, oh, my oh. God. It was so much fun. But, yeah. So, like I said, just been playing around with him. So, I got to get to Monsoon. Or, I got to get through Monsoon difficulty, get to the Obelisk and kill myself. Or... What they've recently added, and by recently I mean like within the last year, they actually added an end to the game, which is that you go to the moon. You can choose to go to the moon, and there's actually a moon boss there. And he is stupid hard. Like, stupid hard. Like, me and JJ actually managed to beat him before he got nerfed. That's how hard he was. He literally got fucking nerfed because to me people were like, this is too... Even on easy difficulty, people couldn't beat him. He was yeah. fucking rough. And that's because you fight him straight on, and then you kill him, and then he spawns like all these moon enemies... And then him and the moon enemies fight you. So you fight all those off. You kill him. And then he's like sitting there on one knee. And he makes this like fucking ball in his hand. And it takes all your items away. And gives them to him. Oh wow. So you have to do damage. And over time you damage the items out of him back to you. I got lucky. Because here we are with the lightning bolt shit again. Where back before he got nerfed. He would move. Or you were able to attack him while this was going on. And my, he, he takes them in order. Well, my fucking fuel cells were the last item that I had. Because before me and JJ fought the boss, we found a disposal. And there was a 3D printer on the map of fuel cells. So I threw away like fucking 20 items. And just fucking threw all those boxes into the 3D printer to get these fucking fuel cells. So I had like 
30 shots of this fucking lightning. So as he's taking my items, I'm just fucking drilling his ass with fucking lightning bolts. And I managed to kill him quick enough uh, before he got to my fuel cells. So me and JJ killed him before he got nerfed. Even after he got nerfed, he's still stupid fucking hard. But they did. They definitely fixed that too, where you can't just fucking, like, he yeah. takes all your items at once. You're just fucked. So, yeah, he's rough. Uh, that, that all makes that game sound very interesting. So, that, like, that you can that fast. Oh, yeah, dude. Like that. It's fucking yeah. crazy. There's, there's shit where you can get items. Uh, like, there's a hopo feather that makes you be able to have an extra jump. <laughs> there's items that are, I think they're like the air gauntlets that go around your, like, ankles that make your jump, like, super fucking high. I mean, there's times where you'll be fighting an, an enemy and they'll hit you and you'll just go flying to the point where you go so high you can barely see the map of the enemies below you and then just reset your character back down on the ground. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've had that happen to me multiple fucking times. Like, And the game talks shit to you whenever you die, too, which is always so fucking fun, too. Like, uh, I know the other night we were playing, JJ died, and it's all like, sad part is his family will never know what happened. And then I died, and it's like, shit, we, we, we suggest trying to play on Drizzle, which is the easiest difficulty. Aww. And I was like, oh, you fucking dicks. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of items, man. That's the fun part, is, is trying to, you know, build a meta for your character. There's so many characters, so many, especially when you mod it, fuck. Got like fucking yeah. twenty four goddamn characters, dude. Oof. I'll never play them because I'll just play the paladin because I'm that I'm that guy. Once I find my character, that's it, dude. That's my guy. I love my paladin. I'll never play the other ones. Fucking, I don't care. Sure. Twenty three other friends you'd be making. Yeah, I could be, but I won't. <laughs> but yeah, it's a fun game, man. But yeah, so I got to get mm -hmm. on monsoon, go all the way through, get to the third one, and I would much rather go to the op because you could you get to the choose to go to the moon at the end of the run so whenever i hit five i wouldn't have to go back through and go through three because then it's harder there's different versions of enemies out there's a lot more overload enemies out overloads do stupid fucking damage i mean i've literally mm -hmm. had one run where i was playing today before we got on to the do all the recording where full health and i am running at the fucking speed of sound and literally jump i'm in midair flying through the air and a fucking overload fireball dude just sprayed like this and shot 10 of them like that and one of them hit me and killed me instantly done like just Oof. dead my body just ragdolls to the fucking side and it's all like well that sucks sweet yeah so it gets hard so i could just go fight the moon boss but he's so fucking rough I feel I have a better chance of trying to just make it through three levels real quick at the end and get to the obelisk and throw myself to the obelisk versus trying to fucking kill the moon guy. So, Does the moon boss get harder if you go through more levels too? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Because you could choose to go fight him whenever you want to. You can do first run, second oh. run, third run, doesn't matter. Okay. But once you fight him and kill him, you have to then escape the moon because the moon goes to explode. You have to run. You have to get, you have to get off the moon. And once that explodes, the game's over. So, yeah, that run is done. So, we normally don't fight him that often because we like to just keep going and going and going. But now we're playing on the harder difficulties, and it's a little hard to do that because it's fucking yeah. rough. So, yeah. And there was also the situation that the main two people I was playing with can't fucking pick a character to save their goddamn life. So, and there's so many different fucking metas. So, it's like, oh, well, this character's good, but with the stuff that you do... You want this, this, and this, and, you know, whenever you're constantly changing your character every fucking time you play the game, it's hard to, you know, buckle down. I'm like, I don't care that you guys pick different characters. That's fine. Everybody plays games differently. I'm the guy that, whenever I find my guy, I find my guy. That's it. I'm good. But when you change it every fucking round, you're not giving yourself a chance to learn that character's moves or what's good for that character to use. Yeah. And then here we are like eight rounds later and you're like, oh, you know what? I, I got pretty far with this person. Then you get your shit packed early on. You're like, I don't understand, man. I did good the first time. And it's like, fucking just take a second. Learn the character. Learn the moves. Learn what, move, what fucking items go good for them. So, because it is one of those risk reward games where it's like there's a lot of fucking loot for you to get on a map. But yep. you're on a time clock. And the time mm. clock is the difficulty. So you pick the game's base difficulty 
And then the time clock is the difficulty. So the longer you stay, you go out of easy into normal, into hard, into oh. very hard, into very very hard, into I'm I see you, into I'm coming for you, and then the last difficulty, which is just ha 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 ha, ha for infinite infinity ha 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 the entire time. So <clears throat> the longer you spend trying to loot, yeah. the harder you're getting. But if you go too quick. You're gonna run into shit that's gonna be too hard for you to kill because you're not properly looted. So, yeah, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. I will say the worst part about the game is getting a good run in and then dying and wanting to play again afterwards because, like, all your mobility, all your attack speed, like going back to base is so rough, especially for me having such a big character. I'm like. Fuck! It takes forever to get across the map. Oh my god, I fucking hate it. Cause there's like they don't just the, the the thing that I appreciate the most about this game, especially when we look at like mobility items, is like they don't just focus on one version of the mobility. So there's the Paul's goat hoof, which is a big ass goat leg that just goes over one leg. That gives you faster movement. So that's just faster movement in general. Yeah. Then there's energy cans. That give you faster sprint, so you run faster while you're sprinting. Then there's the red whip that gives you faster movement speed whenever you're outside of combat. So as long as you're not fighting anything, you're just fucking flying. So all three of those together, you're just fucking, you're everywhere. Like, it's just done. Yeah. And you could stack them. Every, every item is stackable in the game. So... Fucking, there's one time. There's this one statue in the game. This will this will crack you up. There's this one statue in the game, and it's not that common to see, but whenever you do see it, normally it's not a good idea to use. But you can press it, and it will pick one item at random, and it will take all your items and turn them into that one item. Oh, cool! And there was yeah. one time that I did that, and it gave me the energy can, and I had like eighty something energy cans. And I couldn't stop myself. I literally went from one side of the map, bam, and instantly killed myself. Ran right off the map without within seconds. Not even seconds, probably like point seconds. Yeah. That's and hilarious. it was so fast. Like I literally start like walking, it's all slow because the energy cans only works on your sprint. And then I hit the sprint button and it, I was gone. I was like, what the fuck just happened, dude? It was fucking insane. But all items are like that. It's cool. Like the teddy bear. It's called Tougher cool. Times. It blocks off a percentage of damage. But if you get enough teddy bears, you you can almost become fucking invincible. And I love it too, dude. Whenever you take damage and a teddy bear blocks it because it makes a little squeaky noise, it's like, eh. And so <laughs> whenever you get hit, my favorite ones will be like when you have a shit ton of them and they're trying to protect you and you get hit with fire. So you have the fucking, you know, damage over time, yeah. DOT. So you'll hear, eh, 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 as you're just running. <laughs> and you're just fucking running, and the teddy bear is just fucking going crazy. It's like, oh, thank you so much. I love you. Yeah. Because that's, that's, yeah. there's another stuffed yeah, animal, yeah. too, which is a hippo. And that's a red item. Red items are like the top tier items. That one grants you uh, a cheat against death. So if you die, it brings you back to life with all your items and everything as if you did not die. Exact same spot, everything, same money, same all that. Bam. But then it's gone. You can't use it again. It's just done. So, so yeah, there's, it's called Dio's Best Friend. So Where's Dio? No fucking clue, dude. Okay. <laughs> no clue. Wish I could help you. But no, yeah. don't know. But yeah, Dio's Best Friend is the name of the hippo. Yeah. My paladin dude wears him like right here, so That's... it's a lot of fun, man. I I definitely think Risk of Rain Two is a pretty good pickup for anybody. If if you haven't picked it up yet and you want to play it, and playing with friends is so much fun. Like right now, the game only lets you play with up to four people, but you can definitely download a mod that lets you have like sixteen people, and it actually scales the world with it too, which is awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, the mod scales the world with it, which is fucking great. I think the mod is literally called Too Many Friends. <coughs> and it's, it's pretty fucking awesome. So, yeah, it scales the world. I think right now the game is roughly like 20 maybe 30 bucks, but I think you can get it off of G2A for $5. So, yeah, it's definitely yeah, worth yeah, the pickup. Yeah, I'll check out some time. 
Yeah, dude. Seems if you do, cool. fucking let me know, dude. Because, yeah, we definitely fucking slot you in easily. Because we play it fucking all the goddamn time. So, and having more people makes it a lot more fun. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, dude. I, I, I definitely enjoy the game. It's a lot of fun. It's just one of those where it's it's just endless waves, dude. Just enemies and enemies until you activate the teleporter to go to the next level. It's just going to keep just sending shit at you. So yeah. then you hit the teleporter and you get a big ass boss you have to fight with all the like it's it's so cool so it's like you hit the teleporter it gives you this red dome and you got to stay in the red dome to charge up the teleporter you can go anywhere you want to you can leave the dome but the teleporter will stop charging so mm-hmm. you got to stay in the dome it spawns a boss and then it sends all the enemies directly to the teleporter so all the enemies are just rushing the fucking teleporter. And then once you kill the boss and the teleporter hits 100%, then the enemy stops spawning. So then you can kill whatever's left on the map. And a lot of the stuff that we've downloaded recently for mods have been like quality of life mods that uh, a friend's brother helped us find. Um, One of them, there's if you spend a lunar token at a lunar rock, it will actually bring you to the bazaar is what it's called. And it's like this spot in between the stages where like time stops. Mm-hmm. And there's a lunar shop in there. And in the original version, he only sold lunar items. This mod also lets him sell white, red, and green items as well. And it lets you keep your money because at the end of the at the end of the stage, you lose all your money and it turns into EXP. Well let you keep your money into the bazaar. Once you leave the bazaar, then it goes away into EXP, whatever you don't use. And it actually lets him sell regular items besides just lunar items but you can only buy a specific amount so it's not game breaking so like if there's a red item you can only hit it once and then no one else can hit that red item so you still have to be strategic about what you're grabbing i think white items you can hit three times and green items you can hit two times and then they're just out you can't buy anything else and it's not every single item it's random items every time but still it's a good amount of items out of these like six chests so yeah it's a lot of fun man we did that there's like a mini map mod that we threw on that was pretty cool just to kind of show you where the chest and shit are so you're not running around dicking around wasting time trying to find something um yeah i think everything we've done is just basically quality of life mods besides adding characters the only characters i refuse to add were ones where it's like looks like the first grader made their profile picture like you know what i mean like those characters look like shit in game like all the characters that we've downloaded actually look like the developers could have made them Uh, yeah you can put anything in there in theory if you want to i guess yeah i mean those 3d characters look like they'd be rough to make dude not to mention that but you also have to choose where these items are going to go on the character too sure make them so like for instance like my paladin whenever Mm -hmm. there's this item called a focus crystal and basically what it does is that whenever you hit somebody and, and attack them it also splashes the damage to their nearby enemies next to them. Like, they literally have that connect to the hilt of the sword. It's fucking cool as shit. Or, like, a backup magazine. There's, like, this fucking backup magazine that looks like it goes to an AK-47. And that allows you to have an extra of your two ability. And once again, stack. So every time you get another backup, da 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 It literally just equips into the hilt of my sword. <laughs> A little backup magazine. Oh, yeah, so sure. you're just sitting there running around, and my fucking pal has got like this gigantic fucking claymore. So you see this big ass red crystal here, and then a fucking backup magazine just That's right fine. there into the sword protection. It looks fucking stupid, but it's hilarious. And all the characters have unique abilities and unique ticks and quirks about them. Like my guy does a shit ton of damage as long as I'm blessed. And whenever I'm not blessed, I just do like, right, like whenever I sling my sword, mm-hmm. regular hit. It's just hitting somebody with a sword, but if I'm blessed, I hit, and it shoots a wave of holy light out that also does damage as well. And How do you become it. blessed? So my character is blessed as long as I am above 90% health or I oh. have a barrier on me. And there are items, like the topaz brooch, where if I kill somebody, it grants me a barrier for three seconds. So every time I'm killing somebody, there's other items that grant me barriers every time I get hit. And then, like, there's specific skills I can use, like my healing. Every time I pop a heal, it automatically pops a barrier on me and anybody else I'm healing in my dome. So there's stuff to make me stay blessed. But it's cool because, once again, this is a character that was not made by the developers. It was made by somebody who wanted this kind of character in the game. And his big-ass claymore actually shines with holy light when you're blessed. So the blade is white. 
And then whenever I'm not blessed, it just looks like a dull blade. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff that people have uh, put into that game and, and put some time into. So, yeah, like I said, I strongly recommend it, especially for how cheap it is of G2A. Sean, I recommend it. It's a fun game to kind of just sit there and just get lost with because you can fucking play forever and it's like, oh, what does this do? Oh, what does this do? What does this do? Oh, look how stupid my character looks. Oh, look at this. So You like to make your character look stupid. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb items out there, dude. A lot of dumb items. And it's cool that these people who are making these character mods are actually taking that into consideration as well. Like the Dio's yeah. best friend, for instance, the fucking big-ass hippo stuff. My buddy's brother was playing. He was playing as the uh, nemesis enforcer, and this dude has this gigantic axe, and the Dio's best friend just has like the axe directly into his back. I was like, "Oh, dude, they're gonna do Dio's best friend like that, man." I was like, "That poor hippo, dude, just sitting there on his fucking axe like that." I was like, "That's okay. fucked up." I was like, "He's gonna save That's your bad. life at some point, cool. and you're just slamming his ass into enemies as you're just moving around." Yeah, jeez. That's fucked up, dude. Uh, it's a lot of fun, though. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up this podcast. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications. That way you get notified next time we upload another video. Hit us in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and views. If you've ever wanted to play Risk of Rain, like I said, we can have 16 players now. Maybe we'll do like a community night if a lot of That's people want to come play. Yeah. I've only ever had four. So I only downloaded the mod because more than that. we had a new That's fucking person nice. show up and I was like, oh, well, my brother plays sometimes. So in case if he ever wants to play, because apparently there's a mod you can download as well, which I haven't done yet. I'm going to called drop in at any time where you can actually oh, not have yeah. to leave the game and people can just drop the fuck in. And it gives them like a couple of random items to help catch them up to where you're at. So it's interesting. But yeah. So other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. And we'll see you next time.